Gio Asprilia arrived in Italy last summer, something of an unknown quantity. The Colombian international may have been highly rated in his own country, but in Syria he still had it all to prove. Early performances hinted at what was to come, but nobody could have guessed the notoriety he would achieve. Asprilia. Casotti backpedalling, and in fact, Casotti commits the foul. Aspria now. Oh, that's a great strike. A goal for Palmer. And Aspria is a man on target. After 58 games, Milan were beaten. Two weeks later in Palmer, I found myself face to face with the foot that made history. And its owner, Serie A's only Colombian, the aforementioned Mr. Esprilla. He and his wife Catalina had joined us for an array of refreshments in a cafe in the town centre. And talk turned naturally to that Milan goal. A historic kick then. Do you feel a lot of pressure as you were hitting the ball? Yo, lo que pensaba era de, de tirar, tirar bien y tratar de, de marcar gol porque eso es lo que era el mercado de cuenta uno como extranjero. ¿no? Entonces, para mí era importante poder. Asprilia's kick earned him fame all over Europe and confirmed his status as a national hero back home in Colombia. Just 23 years old, Asprilia grew up in the town of Tulua in Colombia, but was to make his name in the notorious city of Medellin, playing for Nazionale. Here he earned the nickname Asperina, Asprin, because he gave his opponents a headache. But unperturbed by this frankly illogical nickname, he scored 15 goals in his last full season at Medellin before word of his talent reached Serie A. Palmer successfully fought off competition from Atalanta and Fiorentina, buying Asprilia for two and a half million pounds and signing him to a five-year contract. Asprilia had been rated as the best South American talent of the last ten years, no less, by the Colombian national coach. But despite scoring this goal against Udinese on his home debut, Asprilia's early performances were less than convincing. <laughs> Nevertheless, Asprilia's arrival had already given Palmer some new options. Against Sampdoria in November, Asprilia gave a reminder of the alternatives he can offer Palmer. His second goal of the season and probably the most effective counter-attack seen yet this season. Meanwhile, Asprilia's wife arrived from Colombia and he began to get used to life here, developing a passion for buying taps, hammers and screwdrivers from hardware stores in bulk to send to the lucky fox back home and indulging his love of fast cars with which he's not too fortunate. On the field though, things are now going from strength to strength. First came the world-famous goal against Milan, then a brilliant game in the Cup Winners' Cup victory over Sparta Prague. Against Foggia, Asprilia ran the Palmer attack, setting up Melli and Vicchiara's goals and inflicting some severe structural damage on the Foggia crossbar before scoring his strangest goal yet this season. What would then you rate as your best goal this season? Do you have an idol as a football player? Roberto Bayo. ¿Por qué? Que me gusta mucho como juega, porque lo veían. People have a hard time describing you as a player. How would you define yourself? Yo me defino un jugador rápido que me gusta mucho jugar con el balón y hacer goles. Overall, though, Faustino is delighted in a relaxed South American kind of way with the way things have gone this season. Cuando me encuentro en un equipo que juega está en Casi arriba la semifinal de la Copa Italia. Ahora estamos en la final, en la semifinal de la Copa de Copa. Estamos en el torneo italiano de quinto. O sea, todo esto para mí es un sueño por por tan poquito tiempo que he estado aquí en Italia. Unfortunately, the dream turned a little sour in May. A mysterious leg wound sustained on a trip home to Colombia meant that he couldn't play in Palmer's European Cup Winners' Cup triumph at Wembley. The player who had done perhaps more than anyone to get the team to the final had to miss out on the big day. But in spite of that disappointment, a great future is assured for Faustino Asprilia. Melli, Asprilla. The same two combine again. Asprilla, 1-0, his seventh goal of the season.
Is this man the best footballer in the world? Well, certainly this year has seen Roberto Baggio blossom into the outstanding Italian player. Sam Doria manager Sven Goran Eriksson was Baggio's coach when he was at Fiorentina. I think uh, you could see it uh, five, six years ago, that he was something very, very special. Uh, brilliant technique. He went always home looking up uh, the, the games afterwards. And uh, you could see, you could smell it, that uh, he is a big talent and he will be a great player. Baggio started the season in superb style and it looked like he was at last going to fulfil the hopes of the whole of Italy and lead the national team to glory. But Roberto sustained a broken rib in the physical nil-nil draw with Scotland in Glasgow, which put him out of action for two months. With Baggio out of the team, Juventus struggled to find their best form in a spell that included a visit from the giants of Serie A, Milan. That game came at the end of November, and before it, we took the opportunity to go and see what a footballer of international renown gets up to when he's off duty. We went to meet Roberto at his new shop, Roberto Banjo Sports, just outside of Tieni in the area where he grew up. And hey presto, there he was, freshly changed into some appropriately subdued leisure wear, and still suffering the odd twinge from the broken rib he received after some rough treatment in that Scotland-Italy game. Yes, it was a difficult game, but... Ce l'aspettavamo così. Sì. E sei soddisfatto del, del risultato? Sì. Eh, diciamo che è stato un risultato positivo, per cui dobbiamo essere contenti. Roberto is less contented, of course, about his broken rib. Apart from just the physical pain, it won't be easy for him tomorrow, sitting in the stands and watching his teammates go out to play the most important game of the season so far without him. È, è una brutta posizione, sì, perché è chiaro che vorrei, vorrei essere in campo anch'io domenica, anche perché è una partita in cui possiamo giocare qualcosa di molto importante per, per lo scudetto perché riuscire a, a vincere domenica è chiaro che ci metterebbe in condizione di andare a, a pari del Mina anche se hanno una partita in meno. Juventus lost that game against Milan, of course, missing their leader and this kind of inspirational fall. Ironically, when Baggio left Fiorentina four years ago, there was an outside chance of him signing for Milan, but he chose instead to go to Turin and join Juventus, the old lady of Italian football. One thing a place at Milan would almost certainly have meant, though, is the odd title or two, something Roberto's career is conspicuously without. As his critics are quick to point out, much as he may play like a champion, Baggio is a footballer who still never won a cup final or a championship. Yes, in fact, it's what, unfortunately, eh, manca, eh, è qualcosa di, di, di importante, è una vittoria, però credo che a 25 anni c'è ancora tanto tempo per poterlo fare. This was the season when all that was to change, and on the way to his first ever trophy, Baggio continued to display the kind of form which kept all of Italy buzzing. And then, of course, he did this to Milan at the San Siro. Well, that, well, that's a lovely turn by Baggio. And the Milan defence in full retreat. They won't catch Roberto Baggio. Oh, not with finishing like that. That was very, very special. Baggio has become by far the most important player at Juventus, and there is no doubt that he was instrumental in their UEFA Cup victory. The headlines in the Italian papers said it all. Juventus had destroyed Borussia Dortmund 6-1, and it was all inspired by the supreme talents of young Roby. So as the fans watch Baggio celebrating his first ever piece of silverware with his Juventus teammates, you can't help wondering about his future. Is his sideboard big enough for the trophies that are bound to come? And will he be holding one of them aloft in America next summer?
One thing's for sure, if he does, 56 million prayers will have been answered. It's thirsty work, but week after week he's there in the goal scoring charts, struggling away in second place, desperately trying to catch up with Lazio's Giuseppe Signori. Who is he? He's Abel Balbo, the highest scoring striker ever in the history of Udinese. A man oh. destined for great things seemingly next year at Inter, or possibly at Juventus, or maybe even Lazio, and an Argentinian. Or perhaps not. Let's start with the facts. And they are these. Balbo was born 27 years ago this Monday in Argentina. However, after two years of applications, as of this February, he is an Italian citizen, complete with the right to vote. The citizenship hasn't changed his status as a foreign player, but despite that and his choke-worthy £9 million price tag, Balbo is one of the most highly in-demand players on this summer's transfer market. Daily mentions in the press have him going everywhere, from Brescia to Bayern Munich. Non leggo queste cose qua perché... Il calcio in Italia funziona così, no? di solito quando un giocatore sta facendo un buon campionato subito ti vendono, ti danno le grandi squadre, un po' il gioco del calcio in Italia, sì, di una cosa sono sicuro, e difficilmente starò qui un altro anno, voglio anche io cambiare squadra, penso che questo sia il momento giusto. When you read in the papers that Balbo is worth 9 million pounds or there about to some club, how do you react to that? Secondo me sono cifre pazzesche, no? Eh, non hanno nessun, nessuna relazione con il calcio. Pagare così tanto un giocatore no, non ha senso. Balbo cost Udinese just two million dollars when he came here four years ago. And although he failed to stop them dropping to Serie B in his first year, in the second, he was the division's leading scorer with 22 goals. More than anybody, even the great Zico had ever scored at the club. After a good start last year, doubts over his continuity arose with just two goals in the second half of the season. But this year, Balbo has answered his critics with 21 goals so far. Io, tra l'altro, ho fatto quest'anno una preparazione molto speciale. Non ho fatto le vacanze. Sono rimasto qua a Udine a lavorare duro perché ci tenevo a fare molto bene questo campionato. Questa preparazione mi ha dato risultati eccellenti e queste, questo mi ha aiutato anche molto. And it paid off handsomely with six goals in his first five games, kicking off with this monster against Inter on the first day of the season. Balbo, he's onside, he's round the goalkeeper and he's equalised. Udinese trail by goal to nil. Oh, but not for long, it's Balbo. 1-1. One, one. And they could have got round the back here. Balbo, half an hour in, Balbo strikes. This is Balbo, he's through, He scored. An hour in, another goal for Balbo. A chance for his hat-trick. Two goals in seven minutes! Four years on, Udine is probably getting a little small for Balbo. It's an agricultural town of only around 100,000 inhabitants up in Italy's northeastern corner, close to Austria and Slovenia. You have quite a relaxing time here at Udinese, apart from some recent problems with the fans. Do you think you'd find it tougher at a big club with the additional pressure and demands? Secondo me, io sono preparato per per giocare una grandissima una grande squadra. Forse sarà un po' presuntuoso, ma io penso che posso fare molto bene in una grande squadra. Sono in letta giusta, sì, sono molto motivato, penso che, che questo sia il momento giusto per fare un, un salto di qualità. Balbo is a low-key and likable kind of guy, a family man, popular with the squad. He shoots pool with the guys and plays tennis almost every day to keep his reflexes sharp. Normal enough, but dig deeper and you find more unusual sides to him. For example, he's fervently religious and a devout chess player. Do you think chess helps your soccer? Invece aiuta, perché per giocare a scacchi devi essere concentrato sempre al 100%, non puoi distrarti neanche un attimo, perché sennò perdi la partita. E forse ti aiuta molto anche in campo, che devi essere sempre concentrato e non sempre riesci a essere concentrato. He likes his chest then and he's pretty serious about his religion too. Balbo attends mass every Saturday night. He takes a Bible with him on all his travels with the team and he celebrates his goals on match day with the by now trademark kiss to the heavens that is not intended lightly. Have you always been this religious? La fede l'ho avuto sempre, forse si è fatto più forza 
più forte in un episodio che, ho, che è successo quando avevo nove anni, no? Sono stato praticamente morto per qualche minuto e, e dopo dal niente sono tornato alla vita. Quindi neanche i dottori sapevano come come era successo questa cosa qua, per una malattia che, avevo, che ho avuto io da piccolo. Quindi penso che da lì si è fatto così forte che adesso sì, è una cosa che porterei sempre con me. Whatever his secret is, special training, chess inspired concentration or an unshakable faith in God, it has enabled Abel to generate the goal to make the big clubs of Serie A queue up waving their checkbooks. Just watch him go next season, but go where? Uruguayan striker Daniel Fonseca made his Serie A debut with Cagliari in 1990, aged just 20. There, in two years, he scored a respectable 17 goals before signing last summer for Napoli. Did he think he was ready for a big club? I think that after two years of experience, in a team like Cagliari, where I had matured a lot, where I had learned the Italian football, I think I've been very good at this time and two years to per poter dimostrare essere una squadra grande quello che vale Fonseca. No? And of course that's exactly what he did. Starting the season with seven goals in eight games, plus an astonishing five scored in the UEFA Cup away leg at Valencia. Fonseca's in there, he's pulled the goal back. Five minutes in. Ten. Fonseca. He left the ball behind, oh that's a crucial strike! Six minutes left. Oh, a consolation goal. Fonseca must score, he has! 1-1 Fonseca! Eh, niente, io sono stato molto soddisfatto di quello che ho fatto fino adesso in questo campionato con una squadra grande. Ma... Fare, go fare gol per gli attaccanti per me è molto importante, ma purtroppo questo anno non è che la squadra è andata bene come aspettavamo, quindi eh, niente, purtroppo siamo qui a metà classifica e i miei gol comunque credo che, che sono serviti, sono stati utili per fare il risultato positivo e niente, cercare di continuare così migliorando per cercare di essere un giorno più completo e cercare di diventare un grande nel calcio. Of course the goals do dry up from time to time, but it's not always the striker's fault. Sicuramente per un attaccante non è che sempre si può segnare tutte le partite, quindi è anche un po' logico che, che capite durante un periodo dell'anno che un attaccante non riesca in due o tre domeniche a far gol. Ma comunque le domeniche scorse contro l'Ancona hanno sofferto anche un po' perché ci ha mancato solo e che è quello che, che ci può dare l'assist dei gol, il passaggio dei gol, quindi ci ha mancato quel, eh, quell'ossigeno che a noi, a noi attaccanti ci serve, se non abbiamo qualcuno che sicuramente ci dà un bel pallone o qualcosa è difficile di segnare. But a forward of Fonseca's caliber will always find the net, and that's why Milan are leading the chase to sign him for next season. This is the moment when Paul Gascoigne officially set foot in Italy for the first time as a Lazio player. The start of an extraordinary season, even by Gazza's outrageous standards. After 17 months out of action because of the most famous knee injury in British history, his first battle was to prove to Lazio coach Dino Zoff that he was ready to play in the world's best football league. The fans needed no convincing, but Paul got straight down to some serious work at the Maestrelli training ground. Lazio started the season well enough without Paul in the team, but the pressure was on Zoff. When would Gaza make his debut? Well, I'm not really sure I'm just looking forward to the match against Genoa. Well, you know, uh, mid-Zoff tea. 
I've cleaned his shoes, I've cleaned his boots, I've done everything he wants in for training. Uh, he wants us to do, I've worked hard, I've done everything. And if that still doesn't work, I'm going on a seafood diet. And every bit of food I see, I'm going to eat the lot. That threat did the trick and Paul Gascoigne made his Serie A debut at the Stadio Olimpico on Sunday the 27th of September 1992 against Genoa. Riedler. Riedler might get there. Now here's Gascoigne. Oh, Gascoigne is trying to find a way through. Just a glimpse of Paul Gascoigne's greatness. I'm sure the Lazio fans enjoyed this as Gascoigne made his way to go. Gascoigne. Oh, Borta Lazio really caught him. All right, I played on Sunday. I made my debut. Uh, tough game, I hurt my knee. But they were saying I flashed through my head that my football was over. I don't doubt my football went over. Um, I didn't hit the nerves. Um, I don't think I've done that bad, considering I've been out for 17 months. The crowd, uh, for me, was uh, really incredible. You know, um, you know, they can't expect. I know I'm one for always pushing myself for better things, but uh, you know, Italian football is different. They're uh, really, really fit, and I think you know I need three or four, or five more games, then I will be ready. Um, until then, then I don't think people should judge me. After another appearance in Lazio's 5-2 win against Parma, this is how Gaza felt about his form and fitness. Right guys, here I am. No more about, well his knee stand the test, no more about this. Is he fit enough? Okay, I'm fit enough, my knee's perfect, I'm ready. And I'm back. His next big test was a trip to the San Siro to play in reigning champions Milan. On Sunday, you know, people say I look tired again, but it wasn't a look tired. I think it's because I played a very, very, very strong team in Milan, biggest teams in the world. Um, I think the first half, we give them too much respect. The second half, we seem to get on top of it, but I think if you go to Milan and you score three goals at their place, you expect at least one point. By this time, Gaza had already become a favourite of the Lazio fans, but he had one more test to pass before he could acquire heroic status, the Rome derby. The Derby, I think, yeah, in Rome is one of the biggest in the world, if not is the biggest. Um, Roma versus Lazio, you know, they never stop talking about it all day, all night, you know, wherever they go. So I'm finding it hard to go out, so I'm just sitting in the house for a week. I've been going out, and people have been stopping the cars, shouting, beeping the horns. Uh, it's incredible, going to restaurants, you know, and all they want to talk about is the Derby. Um, so hopefully we can win, because for me, and I'm not just saying this, this Sunday is like life or death. And hopefully after Sunday I'm still alive. Got a volley now. Gregucci's missed it. Giannini! 1-0. Signore will take the free kick. Gascoigne. Yes, he's got it! His first goal for Lazio comes three minutes from the end of the Rome derby. The saviour has saved Lazio! This reason I was in tears for because I was, I've never been so crap scared or so frightened if we didn't win a draw. I've never ever felt like that before ever in a football match. I've never went out and thinking, you know, well, you know, if we get beat it's always the next one. They don't even think about the next match here. And uh, after the game, I just sat down and said, I don't want to play in another derby. But a week later, Paul was back playing and doing this to Pescara. After Christmas, all went relatively quiet on planet Gascoigne. That is, until the end of January, when this happened. Burbgate provoked a blizzard of headlines and outraged comment which blew as far as the Italian Parliament. This time, Paul knew he'd gone too far. It just seems every time uh, Lazio play live on TV in England, I never get to get a game. I'm always injured or, you know, I haven't been fit enough. Um, then, as you can see, I've been dropped and uh, no doubt if you've seen me uh, little 
that was on the, the TV, you know. Uh, it's just a joke, but uh, some people take the wrong, um, the wrong ways, like the MP seemed to have a go over here. Yeah? Uh, maybe he was just lacking a bit of publicity of himself, or was someone else doing a little bit of publicity off my back. Uh, but no problem, lads, you're full of behind us. Uh, we've talked and they've said, don't worry, just get on with your football. Lazio let Paul know it was time for him to take his football seriously. Bread rolls now, I have to tell him what's really fat in this bread rolls. And I've sorted, oh, cheers. I've sorted, I've done nothing bread rolls because I've been complaining, I have been drinking too much. I do oh, cheers. Look, he said wine's really good for you, but I mean, I try to cut down a lot on it. But sometimes, you know, when I do celebrate, I like to have a glass of water or something. When, oh, when I do celebrate, um, but things I've really, really hated is gherkins. I've really gone off gherkins, you know. Melstein always said, oh, cheers, you know, to bother because they really think you're no good whatsoever in Italian football. Any sane person would have thought that Paul had caught it enough controversy for one season. But don't you believe it? Cue the return game against Genoa. contact with the guys, especially what people were saying, um, you know, the old uh, Gascoigne's future in doubt again. I think I haven't done too bad considering what people expect of me, red card every week. First red card in uh, what was it, seven months or so, so I'm really pleased. By this time, a delighted Paul had settled down nicely in Italy and had taken up residence in this spacious villa to the north of Rome. But the pressure never lets up in Italian football and soon he faced his next hurdle, the home game against Milan, at a time when local rivals Roma had ended the champions' unbeaten run. The atmosphere is starting to build up and uh, not only that, they, they beat Milan on Wednesday in a 2-0. I know the atmosphere is really starting to build up, you can hear it. Um, and doing the pressure back on Lazio, I think, uh, to get the result um, against Milan on uh, Sunday, because if we don't, then uh, I think it, it could be right. <laughs> Lazio, two down, here's Fuser. And they waited for the offside flag, it never came. Gascoigne, that's going to count. That was Gaza's third goal in Italy, and by now he had started to get really accustomed to the Italian way of life. The joined up handwriting was coming along nicely too. It's good now that I can get, get by with the, the Italian, uh, and especially the football wise, that I can uh, speak to the players in, in Italian, telling them, you know, pushing them and um, getting them to go right and left like them with me. At first it was difficult, they were telling us to go right and I was going left, and uh, they was getting it through and scoring. I think that's one of the reasons why we didn't uh, win too many games at first. <laughs> I wasn't walking my man properly. Well, last year fourth in the league in, at the moment, and the team that's third is uh, Atalanta. We play Atalanta this week, and it's going to be a very, very tough match. Well, hopefully, Signori get a goal, and obviously myself, and uh, uh, we put in a great performance and soft happy at the end of the game. Signori, Gascoigne. April saw a special treat for Gazetta viewers as Paul took us on a trip to the Barbers. <laughs> Ciao. Paul's new haircut, though, failed to protect him from the attention of Jan Wouters and his flying elbow in the international against Holland. The cheek injury required an operation, and no football meant a spot of trout fishing in Hertfordshire. I felt sharp, I felt good, I was doing the right thing. You know, some form of school, I got an elbow in the face. I can't remember much of it, I just remember getting up for it. Which come on the, the, the side of me face, you know. Um, a bit disappointed because I... I felt dizzy, and the jaw was, felt very, very sore, and I couldn't really take any much part in, the, in the, the game, you know. Despite already sporting the scars from his operation, Paul wasn't too cautious with the local Roma supporting wildlife. But Lazio could wait no longer, and soon Paul returned to the field against Ancona, inspired by a nasty piece of face furniture. Uh, I trained with it the day before the game and everything went well, it felt comfortable. Yeah, the, the game went fantastic. Uh, the third goal uh, got a little bit of face for this, uh, beat a few players. And, uh, I, mean, I could have took it on myself, but if I had to save it, then uh, you know, they were still in with a chance for 2-0. 
Lazio qualified for the UEFA Cup. The disaster was to follow after England's performance in Norway. After the game, Graham Taylor didn't need to say anything. I uh, felt sorry for him because we d we didn't perform the two games. Uh, we didn't perform well, and uh, I felt that we we all let him down. But I've enjoyed my first season in um, Italy. It's been an experience, and I've learned. I've learned a lot. One of Italian football's biggest stars, Rude Hullet, had to start the season watching from the stands at the San Siro. The three foreigners' rule meant he could no longer command an automatic place in the Milan team. He was due to play his first game of the season against Sampdoria, but the skies opened and the game was called off. Was someone upstairs conspiring against him? Maybe, you know, <laughs> he wanted something else from me. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no, you know, you just take it, you know, as it is, you know. Maybe it's better not to play. Maybe, it's, uh, maybe you know, he was thinking about it another time. <laughs> He may well have been thinking of another time because when Hullet did make his debut one week later in Florence, he certainly came back in style. Hullet contributed two goals and set up another in Milan's 7-3 demolition of Fiorentina, who had been touted as pretenders for the title. Silvio Berlusconi's Milan, though, were quite simply on another level. But when a player of Hullet quality can't get a regular game at one club, it's obvious that others are going to start sniffing around. Inquiries from other clubs haven't been lacking. Marseille, Sampdoria and Real Madrid have all made noises about him. So where does Hullet see his future? At well, this moment, you know, I just want to respect my contract, you know. And uh, on, the, on the end of the season, I will uh, we'll, uh, make a decision about staying or, or, or leaving. Wherever his future destination, Hullet will remain a part of Milanese folklore forever, having shone so brightly in the company of some outstanding footballers also wearing the Milan colours. We asked Hullet about his relationship with his fellow players. Yeah, but you know, the friends you know, we have uh, in your, during your youth time, that are your friends, who, who, who knew you when you were just a, a child, you know, no one. Now everybody wants to be your friends, you know. And that is not the same. It's just, just, it's just a colleague or something you know. But a friend, I have my friends from my youth time. There's something more dif different. Yeah, I have friends with Frank, but Frank I know from my youth. Mark I, I, I knew only when, they, uh, when I came to, to Milano. He's a good guy. He likes uh, to make a lot of jokes. And of course we know each other, you know, so well now. You know, without without seeing, without you know, blindly almost, I can I can feel where he is. So one of the greatest footballers of all time nears the end of his career. He may not have enjoyed much playing time in Milan's title-winning campaign this year, but when he did play, he had the knack of scoring important goals at important times. Van Basten, oh, Fiori sponges straight to Hollick. Roma defends, Solit again. Oh, that's a special goal. And can the two substitutes make an impact? Yes, they can. Solit, he's onside, He scored, and Milan a level. Let's hope that Syria hasn't seen the last of Rude Hullet. Sampdoria golden boy Roberto Mancini started the season with a huge responsibility, that of leading a team after the departure of one of its star's former striking partner, Gianluca Vialli. In week two against Ancona, he scored one of the goals of the season, and things were looking good. We are going to make a good championship, to make experience for all the young people, hoping to arrive in the UEFA. At this moment we have 10 points, we are quarti in classifica abbiamo una partita da recuperare quindi noi dobbiamo solo essere contenti e sperare di andare avanti su questa strada 
è difficile parlare del futuro, però io penso che la Sandoria abbia i giocatori e i mezzi per fare di nuovo un ciclo vincente. But those winning ways were interrupted when he was out of the team due to injury and suspension. And from that point, inconsistency became a problem that dogged Sampdoria all season. L'anno scorso avevamo sia Reso, Cartane, Bonetti, Dario, che erano alti, quindi di testa difficilmente ci facevano gol. Quest'anno purtroppo non li abbiamo più, Cartane ci ha infortunati, quindi è chiaro che soffriamo, forse dobbiamo stare un po' più tensi. Da noi erano andate bene per un po', poi chiaramente vengono fuori gli errori e poi siamo anche un po' sfortunati ultimamente anche se secondo me non meritavamo di perdere le partite che abbiamo perso quindi no, secondo me non c'è da preoccuparsi più di tanto poi è chiaro che in attacco uno può tirare tante palle però è difficile farle metterle sempre tutte in rete Mancini enjoyed a legendary partnership with Viali at Sampdoria bringing the team a Scudetto and a European trophy But ironically, Mancini has found his best ever form since he has led the sap line on his own. We caught up with Roberto just before the match against Juventus, which marked Viali's first game against his old club. Would that be a difficult encounter? Per me no. Per lui, eh, perché io sono rimasto qua, quindi no, nessun problema. Per lui penso che sia di sì, perché tornare nello stadio che ha visto il protagonista per otto anni penso che sia un po' di emozione, anzi penso tanto, quindi speriamo. Voi siete sentiti in questi giorni? Sì, ma ci sentiamo spesso. E lui che cosa ha detto? Eh niente, ha detto che mi marca e quindi sta attento. It did turn out to be an emotional game at the Luigi Ferrari Stadium back in January, ending in a 1-1 draw. But while Viali's career has been put on hold in a disappointing time at Juventus, Roberto Mancini is playing the best football of his career, and this season marks his highest ever total in Serie A. 15 goals taking his career total to 94, and he scored some spectacular ones along the way. Mancini, he's pulled one back, just about. Sampdoria two down. No free kick, but here's Mancini. Oh, they've pulled one back. Mancini, two goals in five minutes. Lombardo, they took a deflection, it's through to Mancini. This could be his hat trick. It is. Mancini is onside and makes it to the second attempt. Lombardo. Mancini's through here. That's his second of the game. 2-0 to Sampdoria. Jugovic takes a free kick. 1-1 in the 91st minute. But the coolest man in Italian football does have a dark secret. I do it. How do you say it? Tatuaggi. Where are Here's one of them, a woman in a Sampdoria scarf. The others, though, you'll have to speculate about. <laughs> David Platt left Aston Villa to join Bari in 1991 for five million pounds. Although they were relegated, he had a good season, scoring 11 goals. Last summer, he signed for Super Club Juventus, and it looked like his boyhood ambitions were about to be realised. But he knew there was going to be one not so small problem. It eventually went on to blight his whole season. The thing that's happened this year in Italy um, is there is now you can have as many phones as you want on your books, but you can only play three in one game. So inevitably somebody's got to stay out. We have four here. Inevitably one has got to go into the sand. Um, I haven't complained in any way, shape or form. I understood the regulation. I understood what the rule was, um, just like the others. Uh, we're all friends and we're all professionals and we know that when you go out, you've got to go out to uh, produce your best and hope that the manager picks you in, in the team that's after that. Here we have players like Baggio, Viali, Muller, up front, Di Canio, who were all attackers 
And if I start going up there and helping them, then there's nobody to give the ball to them. So it's not a defensive midfield ball. It's very much the same as any role that I've been playing before from the other side. So he started the campaign sitting in the stand, but when he made his Serie A debut for Juventus against Genoa in September, he did so in heroic style. Platt, finding Roberto Basio, Platt, yes, the level at 2-2, David Platt scores on his Juventus debut. It is nice to get on the score sheet, um, 30 minutes from the end, we, we showed a great deal of character because we were down to 10 men um, after one of our boys was sent off. Uh, you want to win every game, and because of that, it, 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 um, it, it detracts a little bit away from the fact that you scored. Um, but to get on the score sheet is very nice. Yes. But then a knee injury kept him out for three months, and he didn't score again until the home match against Napoli. Muller with the corner. Platz, 2 0. But Platz still couldn't command a regular place in the Juventus team. He netted just one more goal, the equaliser against Sampdoria, but the look on his face after scoring said it all. Roberto Baggio, it might come through to Platt. The level, and there may be a place at this club for David Platt. So it's been a testing season for the England captain, and his future remains in the balance. We went to see him at his home in the fashionable outskirts of Turin, complete with a fabulous view of the Alps. What did he think of his second season in Italian football? Not the way I would have liked to be. I think everybody always wants more from the from this uh, season. Um, we've managed to win the UEFA Cup this season, and, and as a team, I'm sure that we we're disappointed that we haven't won a the Italian Cup that we got so close to, and, and b the the championship that we wanted at the start of the season because that is the main thing for all Italian supporters and all Italian clubs having to play in a different position. Um, it's probably added something to my game. Um, I was regarded as a midfielder and still regard myself as a midfielder that can get forward and score goals. And when I go back and I play for England, I've been playing up front recently. Um, and it's nice to know that Mizanak is still scoring goals, he's still there. Uh, like I said, I think I've added to my game by the defensive qualities that I've had to um, learn here. But to be honest, I think it, it's gone well. Um, like I said, we, we've won the UEFA Cup and anybody to win a major, champ, major trophy like that in his first year has got to be satisfied with the year that he's played. Nobody knows what's going to happen, I think. Um, you know, there's been a lot of things in the newspapers, but to believe newspapers um, is fatal, really. Ever since I scored the goal against Belgium in the World Cup finals, I've had to live with speculation about where David Platt's going to be playing the season after next. Um, I've never really taken any notice of it, and, and when it does happen, and if it does happen, then I'll speak about it. But right at this moment in time, I've got a three year contract at Juventus, another two years for it to run, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm still a Juventus player. <laughs> The Signore, and it's a goal! The Cousins kept it in. Signore, and another one! That was Giuseppe Signore announcing his arrival at Lazio last September with a considerable bang in their season opener. Nine months and 24 more goals later, the season is almost over. Signore's black Mercedes speeds into Tour de Quinta for one of the last training sessions before the summer break. Time then, we thought, for a closer look at the pint-sized phenomenon. We met for a chat and excuse the symbolism, a goal map. But after all, he is the Capo Cannonieri, having scored five more goals than his nearest rivals. I'm very happy, I'll repeat, because 26 goals to do in Italy is very difficult. I'm very happy because the Lazio, even with my goals, has managed to conquer a place in the Coppa UEFA. When we spoke to Signori last October, he predicted Marco van Basten would be the season's top scorer. The Dutch striker, of course, then spent four months out injured. But even without his competition, Signori has more than earned the title. He's already scored more goals than van Basten managed when he won the title last year. More than anyone, in fact, in the history of Lazio. And enough to leave his closest rival, Abel Balbo, looking on. Describe Giuseppe Signori to us. È un tipo tranquillo che piace divertirsi fa le stesse cose che fa un ragazzo normale di 25 anni, niente di più, se te ne intendo. Ma uno normale va in discoteca, signore, non può andare. E non va? No. Ma è? No. 
Is there another Giuseppe Signore that maybe we don't know about? Si. Quello lo È difficile. Ti ho detto, a me non piace parlare della vita privata. Eh. Anche perché penso che... Eh, il signore deve essere giudicato prima di tutto come giocatore, perché il giornalista sportivo interessa come giocatore che la domenica la giochi bene. Mm. Poi se va a sette giorni su tre in discoteca al giornalista interessa poco, o male interessa solo per fare notizie. One of the most commonly known curiosities about the Signori is the Padre Pio Bless Shirt car crash incident, or how in September 1991, Giuseppe Signori avoided death in a motorway pileup after a pilgrimage made to the monastery that was once home to Padre Pio, an Italian priest blessed repeatedly with extraordinary gifts. Adesso è andato a San Giovanni Rotondo dove c'è appunto Padre Pio, dove pregava lui. E là ho fatto benedire una maglietta che poi era una maglietta che indossavo quando ho avuto quell'incidente che ho distrutto la macchina però io non mi sono fatto niente la macchina tutta distrutta non funzionava più neanche il telefonino niente solo la radio ha continuato ad andare Would you say you're very superstitious then? Io sì, io sì sì, se magari una domenica prima faccio una cosa anche la domenica e magari tutte le cose vanno bene la faccio anche la domenica dopo Ma che ti posso dire magari faccio sempre la stessa strada andare a casa perché porta bene fai sempre le stesse colazioni domenica sempre la stessa colazione mangio sempre le stesse cose so far the superstition has worked slowly but surely Betty is just 25 but he's been rising through the ranks of Italian football for the last 8 years after being dumped by Inter's youth squad in 1984 for basically being too small Signori headed down south to the amateur squad at Letty where he eats out a living repairing TVs at the owner's workshop Year by year, he's climbed the divisions ever since, until three years ago, he arrived at Foggia in Serie B. Whilst at Foggia, Beppe also found time to present a local TV program and write a history of the Foggia team. It didn't sell well, something he puts down to overpricing. Beppe clearly had a lot of fun at the town, but his conversion to southern ways and his views on the growing split between north and south in Italy didn't exactly earn favour in his hometown of Bergamo, a bastion of northern Italian sobriety. In fact, when Lazio visited Bergamo back in March to play Atalanta, it wasn't just the penalty Signori scored that earned him a barrage of abuse and a police escort from the stadium. Anche lì è stata colpa di un giornalista che ha messo un'intervista di quattro mesi, quattro mesi fa, nel senso che avevo detto che non mi piaceva la nebbia e che non mi piaceva eh, come stava andando avanti l'Italia, che il capo della Lega, eh, con tutti i casini già che ci sono in Italia, è venuto a fare ancora più confusione. Certo, metterlo dopo, prima di una partita contro l'Atalanta, contro la città dove sono nato, ha creato qualche polemica, adesso a Bergamo eh, non ci posso andare tanto volentieri. The events at Bergamo were a rare blemish on an otherwise trouble-free season. Well received in the national team, consistently highly rated by the press, Beppe is one of the few to be spared the whistles of the ever more turbulent Lazio fans. Thanks, of course, to 26 goals in Syria and 6 in the Coppa Italia. They say that you know all your goals off by heart. Which one do you think is the best from this season? Ma ho detto forse il migliore è stato quello a Pescara. E poi dopo quello con l'Inter e con l'Udinese li metterei a pari tutti e due. Col Toro è stata una bella, una bella corsa più che un bel gol. <laughs> è stata una bella lotta di 50 metri con Bruno, quello sì. Sì, mi sono appoggiato un po', stato un po' furbo in quell'occasione. Il eh, più importante è sicuramente contro Pescara in casa sul calcio di rigore al novantesimo. What are your ambitions for next year? La metà di quest'anno. Sono così. gol va bene l'anno prossimo. A warm Uruguayan welcome awaited us in Senor Sosa's three-story house overlooking Lake Como, where he lives with his wife and two daughters. Ruben passed round the glasses, and after a quick toast to the future of Anglo-Uruguayan relations, we got down to talking, and I launched my opening demand. What's Ruben Sosa like? Un ragazzo che le piace molto il calcio, un ragazzo che è tranquillissimo, le piace, le, le piace molto essere in famiglia quando è diciamo, un giorno di riposo. Dopo in campo, scherzoso, 
si diverte con i, con i, con i tifosi. Penso io che una passione per il calcio che, che riesce a essere tutto in, fuori del calcio tranquillo. No? Allora, Football has been Ruben's life since childhood. One of 11 children of a poor family in Montevideo, Ruben became the youngest player in Uruguay Serie A, debuting at the age of just 14 for Danubio against the country's champions, Penarol. Doveva giocare la prima partita era contro una, una squadra fortissima che ha vinto tantissimo che era il Peñarol e affrontarmi a un giocatore come Morena, Fernando Morena, è un grandissimo è stato un grandissimo campione in Uruguay. Allora era, era nervosissimo, dopo quando entra in campo mi dimentichi tutto e sono riuscito a farlo bene. Sosa even scored a goal on the Champions in that debut game and stayed three years at Danubio before seeking success in Europe, playing for three seasons at Spain's Real Saragossa. Then came Italy and Lazio, where his rapidly established bomber credentials were marred by a reputation for inconsistency in away games. So is he satisfied with those four years? Sì, sì, perché io in quattro anni ho fatto 40 gol al Nazionale, no, no, non è che mi dispiace che non siamo arrivati a UEFA o, o ci è mancato solo quello, mm. dopo che io mi trovavo sempre bene in una città bella e con i tifosi che sono molto appassionati al calcio. No? Ruben was a particular favorite with the fans at Lazio and got on well with the rest of the team, but after four seasons at the club he was very happy to leave. He claimed he left because Lazio didn't want him anymore, but in fact it was Sosa who held off renewing his contract until it expired, allowing Inter to pick him up for under a million pounds. They rewarded him with a deal that tripled his salary to £600,000 a year basic. It took a while for Sosa to break into an overpopulated Inter squad, but Sosa avoided arguments and with the failure of Panchet established his place in the team. However, in week 10, a thigh sprain versus Milan sidelined him for three games. It's not just absences through injury that make Ruben Sosa the gazer of Uruguayan football. He's leader of the Inter counter-attack, deadly on free kicks, an alert and agile mover of the ball, and Inter's fastest player. And since his return from injury in January, Sosa has hit his best form ever in Italy. Secondo me è perché è riposato direttamente i giorni, mi è messo a posto con la gamba, dopodiché sai quando un giocatore non gioca per 20 giorni sembra che sia stato un anno fermo, allora riesce, c'è più voglia di giocare, sai quando rientra vuoi fare gol subito e solo, solo, solo quello. Any particular game that you would rate as your best from this season? Io penso che contro la Juventus, che, che gioca contro Totò, che mi ha trovato molto bene, ah, ho fatto una bella segnata al primo gol. Hai avuto un gol di questa stagione che è un particolare favorito che sta nel tuo mind? Ma credo che il della Juventus non è stato bellissimo. È stato bello l'azione con Spiracia, sì. che è stato eh, un 1-2 con Totò, è molto bello. No, allora con lui mi trovo molto bene perché lui continua la giocata. E, Most observers, though, would highlight Sosa's second free kick two weeks ago at Fiorentina. Sosa scored twice that day, and his one-man offensive show prompted this outrage eulogy after the game from the Fiorentina president. Sosa's devil-like ways continued for the rest of the season as Inter kept hacking away at Milan's lead at the top of the table. Ruben led the way, scoring on field and in the changing room, inspiring the lunatic talk of catching Milan for the title. Cosa sono io? Perché io, io ci credo ancora, perché sono quattro punti. Eh, vedendo il Milan che non è che sta giocando molto bene, eh, vedendo il Milan che va a Udine a solo pareggiare, si vede che è un po' in crisi. La speranza è piccola, però ancora c'è. In the end, of course, it wasn't to be him. Milan were crowned champions for the second year running. But at least little Ruben Sosa had scored 20 goals, most of them stunning, in what was a memorable and exciting campaign that announced the return of Inter as a force in Serie A. Marco van Basten, unquestionably the greatest striker in the world, and one of the main reasons why Milan have been so successful over the last few years. This goal machine started the season firing on all cylinders, helping his team to six straight wins and retaining their air of invincibility. A great period for the club. Now we are also in a sp uh, special moment because uh, we are already 42 games uh, unbeaten, so... I think uh, 
that not happens so 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 much. No, I think uh, till now uh, we played better than last year. We have played eight games, 15 points, and uh, we made a lot of goals. We played better during the games, and uh, I think you have always uh, to try to be better. And he does just keep on getting better. He's the bane of the Serie A defenders, and even on a bad day, Marco has the psychological advantage, because you just never know when he can pull something out of the bag. But this season, a new rival for his Capo Canigneri title has appeared. Lazio Giuseppe Signore. Van Basten, though, has a head start. I don't know, I have the event, event touch, event touch, event touch that uh, I make uh, part of the team of Milan. And uh, that's uh, a really <laughs> advantage. But Van Basten knows that in football, nothing lasts forever and that his and Milan's brilliant run has to come to an end sometime. Maybe after a month or two months, there will also come uh, difficult times and uh, then we will see how far we are and how uh, strong we are, I think. Sure enough, Marco sustained an ankle injury which kept him out of action for four months, but he came back against Udinese looking as sharp as ever. Van Basten's on the back post. He might get another opportunity and couldn't squeeze the ball in. His last goal of the season came against Ancona. Van Basten, his 13th Serie A goal in just 15 appearances. Here's news of how you can get even closer to life in Serie A. That's by joining our brand new Club Italia. Our first three honorary members, none other than Paul Gascoigne, David Platt and Des Walker. For £29.99, you can become a member and the benefits are enormous. For start, you'll receive a Club Italia sports bag, a Club Italia cap, addition to the new Football Italia magazine, a Serie A full-colour wall chart, a members only lapel badge, and a monthly newsletter going right behind the scenes of Italian football. In addition, members will get discounts worth over £150 from a whole range of goods. Just call the credit card hotline on 0891 555 123 for full details. And join Gazza, David Platt and Des Walker as part of the Italian Infound. You've seen the action on the field and seen some of the best players and teams. Now experience the atmosphere of Italian football live in Italy. Alitalia will fly you to all the major towns and cities and Italia tours will arrange packages to see the games or to see the country. Whatever your reason for going, book with Alitalia and Italia tours. Call 071 371 114 for more details.